Hey, Mr. Brandon O'Gatekeeper here, man. <clears throat> so I'll tell you what, bro. I could, ha I could have a 16 pill sent to me and, you know, take me an hour to fix. You know, could take a day or two, but it could take an hour to fix. Or sometimes you never would even think in your mind, you know, you could have something as tiny as this, the smallest amp in existence that Texas Star has made, you know, a one pill, and, you know, end up taking you four hours plus, you know, or sometimes the smallest things can be the biggest thorn in your flesh <laughs> than a bigger amp, you know, like most of the times when I get a small amp like this come in, it's easy peasy, you know, in, out, you're done. But sometimes, like this one, it wasn't like that. I had to go through a big rabbit hole of troubleshooting here. And, uh, whew, we finally got it. But down through the rabbit hole of getting it fixed, I have had to uh, definitely change the circuit a good bit. It's not the, uh, it's not the original DX100 circuit anymore. It's pretty much a DX100 uh, modulator V plus uh, excuse me modulator plus hybrid and uh, come to find out some of the problems were cold solder joints and due to it being very hot at one point there was a cold solder joint on one of the 700 and 65 pico fared excuse me pico fared uh, silver dip mic as it was on the output transformer okay and uh, basically the first thing I did of course was the transistor was blown which is this right here and I went ahead and put another 2290 in there for you and all I could get was about 50 peak out of it that's when I had to go ahead and start going down the rabbit hole <laughs> and uh, then I started taking them once I figured out it wasn't nothing, um, you know, a short or any crazy, crazy thing like that or anything with the uh, tuning capacitors, I uh, went ahead and dropped some tuners in here, as you can see. And I still couldn't get no more than about 75 peak out of it. That's about all I could get. So that's when I went ahead and started going through and uh, changing the wraps on the uh, transformers, basically going to a newer style Texas Star one pill which is the modulator mod v the modulator plus that's the latest circuit that they've done for a one pill i still have kept the bias in here this is the only one pill that texas star ever made that has bias going to it not even the super v111 has bias going to it if i remember correctly i'd have to double check that but if i remember correctly it doesn't which i would think that amp would have since they put that amp in the 350-250 cabinet but um so I basically took it down to the modulator plus circuit 2 2000 uh, it's got a 1600 on it 1500 1600 puff right there Pico Farad uh, I went ahead and put you a cap from the collector to ground got you a new 10 ohm on here um, let's see like I said I had to rewrap Went ahead and soldered your tabs right here, which is what I always do. Make sure those never oxidize. And uh, went ahead and thickened up the uh, trace here going all the way back. And believe it or not, I wish I would have recorded it. After I thickened up that trace, you gained 10 watts PEP. Can you believe that? I always just didn't really like the idea of it having to flow through that small trace, you know, on, on these amps. But... I'll be back. I'm going to get these trimmers out of here and get them tuned in. The mic in, excuse me. All right, brother. Got her all mic'd in for you. Okay. Went ahead and got the trimmers mic'd in. Got your tuning caps right here already put in for you, man. Here's what we're getting. We are on 14.6 volts, just so you'll know. This is a 250 watt slug. Okay, 250 watt slug, we're looking at the top scale. Come on, man. Come on, I hate it when it does. 
see this. Just focus for me. Focus. Whatever. I don't understand it. I've got to get me a new phone. I'm sorry about this, bud. Close to 120 watts. Oh, 50 bird right there. 50 bird. Uh, 122.90. Oh, here's your input tune. Oh, input reflect. I mean, it's a five watt slug. Oh, so this bad boy's working good, man. It took a good bit of dang work to get this thing working for you, brother, but I got it working for you. Got you a new feedback uh, uh, circuit uh, circuit on here. The other one had. Somebody had dro drove this box pretty good, and I think it had warmed up. Like I said, I still left the bias on here, so this is still biased. And uh, we got her back working for you, man. Sometimes the smaller boxes can give you more of a headache than the bigger ones. All right, let's get this next one straightened out for you. I think you just got a preamp uh, problem with this one, I believe. So we'll get that straightened out for you, and I'll be back. Hey bud, um, you didn't mention on the, tell you what, drop my dang phone, you didn't mention on the video about the, uh, lamps not working on these two switches, uh, I've got to fix them for you, man, I can't let that go back to you without them working, I know it ain't no big deal, but I'm gonna fix them for you, figure out why. Go ahead and solder these tabs. This is just something I do with everything. Every one of these Texas stars, dude. It's, it's just a natural thing I always do, so they'll always be making a perfect connection. They really should have done that by the factory. But uh, we'll figure out why this preamp ain't working. I gotta hook my antenna up and see what's going on with it. But I'll be back. You're right, man. The preamp ain't working. Get her fixed. All right, big brother. We got it. Got it fixed for you. You probably can't hear it on the radio uh, the recording right here. So I got the radio up under this desk, but she's fixed, man. There you go. Preamp is fixed. Amp's done. The only thing I tell you, if you could do the help the amp a little bit if you think about this take a look at this thick wire okay i'm gonna turn that radio off see this big wire coming in here like this big eight gauge wire all right take a look down here see this choke right here this little choke that choke is feeding the power from this big wire to this transformer to feed these two transistors okay all right, that choke is thinner than this. It's thinner than this. We'll say if even if it was this thick, go from that to here to the pills. That makes no sense to me. <laughs> That's why I always like doing uh, uh, power wire upgrades all the way to back to the back of the transformer. I call it the full power distribution upgrade. And all you gotta do, man, is just get you a choke. Remove this, get you a choke. Half inch uh, choke, 43 core material, cause that's higher permeability. Wrap that joker three to four times and solder it from the hot bus here to the back of the transformer. Probably gonna do a whole lot of difference for this, but it can do a little bit of difference. You definitely got more of a power flow it's kind of like getting a big water hose and hooking up a tiny 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 water hose to it <laughs> so uh 
you know what, screw it. I'm going to go ahead and do it, do it for you for free. I'll be back. All right, brother. There you go. You see the reason for wrapping it four times, or you can do three, is to make sure there's enough inductive, uh, inductance, excuse me, to help keep this RF off this power line that's being, because you got to think about it, this right here is sitting, is soldered to the back of this transformer, which means it's sitting on the top of these transistors where the output of your amplified RF is coming out of, which is DC. Okay. I mean, this is DC sitting on the RF, which is, 20, you know, whatever megahertz that you're using it at. You want to keep that off this DC line because RF travels on the skin of things, so it can travel down. This choke gives it enough inductance. It's well, it's it's more inductance than than this. Where did I put that choke? That choke went somewhere. I might have accidentally knocked it to the floor or something. That choke that I took. The, oh no, there it is. Dang it, I thought it was right there. <laughs> but anyway, that choke that uh that I removed, it may have fell on the floor. I guess I thought I had put it tossed it over here. But anyway, um, this is more inductance now than that choke so you got a little bit more inductance plus you got thicker wire more current flow this is what you get out of it just to show you real quick i'm just showing the peak we're on the 500 watt slug looking at the middle scale where you see the 20 it's 200 watts boy i need a new phone so bad so bad just, oh look at that over 400 watts peak out of a Texas Star 350, just hitting it with my bench radio. I think the voltage is a little high though. But I got it. 15.3 volts. Here we'll turn it down to 14.4. Oh, 400 watts peak. RMS. close to 150 birds oh this thing working good man all right buddy we got the preamp fix for you i soldered these tabs for you uh, put a choke on here to kind of help you had already done a little power wire upgrade to it and uh so this bad boy is ready to rock and roll man go ahead and get the top back on it and compile these videos together and get them shipped out to you and uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Brandon, for hanging in there with me, brother. I know you've been waiting on these things. I should have been able to have these things back to you a lot quicker, but just a lot of unexpected things coming up that had came up that added a little bit of time to things. You know how it goes, big brother. But, whew, I promise you'll never have to wait like that again if you ever need to send me something in the future because I won't be taking in nothing but just a minimum amount of work at one time so that uh, this never happens again. All right, buddy. 73s. Hope it lasts for a lifetime. Gatekeeper said it. We're gone. Bye-bye.